entering the arena now, we have Jaden Brown. And Jaden is going to show us how to warm up effectively before riding his dressage test. Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for uh, coming today. It's a uh, it's very nice to be invited back again to give you a uh, small presentation on uh, how to warm up effectively. This is uh, a young horse that I train. His name is uh, Lacoste. He's uh, bred in Queensland and he's uh, by the stallion APH Ludo. We are working at around uh, elementary level. He's, he's training some movements from a medium and, and uh, at competitions we we compete at a novice and elementary. So when we think about our, our warm-up, obviously uh, a successful warm-up starts long before you get on your horse. Uh, obviously, uh, if listening to Nicole while I was uh, walking outside, the training that we do at home plays a huge part in uh, what we're going to have at a competition. But when I think about what I'm going to do myself at a competition. It starts either the, the day before or, or the early on the morning of the competition. And uh, a big part of that is, is time management. If, uh, if we're not uh, on the ball with our time management, then we're not going to have a great time at the competition. So assuming we all, all know our horses fairly well, we have a little bit of an idea of, of what they're like to take out to competitions. I know that, that this horse is, is fairly happy to, to uh, turn up on the day of a competition. He doesn't need a, a huge amount of time to settle in. Um, that's not to say he, he doesn't, uh, doesn't get spooky or he doesn't, doesn't look at things, but I've, I've uh, learned over the, over the years of competing him that, that it doesn't change dramatically if we get there the day before or if we have uh, arena familiarization. So, so if I'm competing this horse, I'll usually leave nice and early in the morning, make sure I've got time to uh, give him a little rest at the, at the competition venue, give him a drink of water and, and a little bit of uh, something to eat to settle in. And uh, then I start to think about tacking up, getting ready and, and, and what time I'm going to hop on. So normally as a, as a personal preference, I, I like to have at least half an hour to warm up. Uh, some, of, some of the horses that I ride need a little bit longer and some of them need a little bit less, but uh, normally if I, if I allow at least half an hour, if the horse is, is really on the ball, it just, just gives me a chance to do a, a few more laps of walk to uh, let him rest. But when I do uh, start to get ready to hop on, I always like to put the bridle on myself, even if I am lucky enough to have someone helping me at a competition. There's, there's nothing I hate more than hearing someone blame their groom for something not being right. It's always the rider's responsibility to check all the gear. So if you do have a, a very generous friend helping you at a competition and they accidentally put the wrong, the wrong bridle or the wrong saddle cloth on, it's, uh, it's, it's not their fault because ultimately it's uh, where the ones riding through the test, so it's our job to, to check everything. But I, I always like to put the bridle on myself, and that's when I go through a little checklist, make sure all the gear is, is correct and how I would normally have it at home. Obviously, we don't want to have uh, too much uh, drastically different gear on the horse out of competition. Obviously, we'll put our, our, our cleaner saddle cloth on, but I always make sure the horse is going in the, uh, the same saddle, the same bridle, and uh, so that the horse is as familiar with, with the tack that's on, on it as, as possible. So when I do hop on at a competition, I'll, I'll allow for, uh, for the time it takes to walk to the, the warm-up. That's usually when I run through a little bit of a checklist of, of the movements that are in the test. I'll, I'll make sure I'm, I'm very well practiced in uh, the actual test that I'll be competing. It's uh, not a good idea to leave it to the last minute to learn your, learn your test. But I'll, I'll make sure that the horse gets at least five minutes to walk around, uh, settle into the warm-up, and also just to uh, warm, warm their body up a little bit. So today we're warming up for the elementary 3.2 test. So uh, I've 
obviously had a look at it earlier, and ho hopefully I won't, uh, won't make any course errors, but in this test we have uh, some uh, medium trot, travers, simple changes in canter, some counter canter, and turn on the haunches. So when I warm up, I'm, I'm not going to practice the test, but I will touch on all of the movements that are in the test so that I have a chance to correct anything that might go wrong, but at the same time, I don't want to overdo anything that hasn't quite gone to plan. The, the warm-up is uh, definitely not the time that you tackle training issues, and uh, you have to be quite selective about the, the things that you will go back and repeat, the exercises that you'll do again, and then sometimes you do just have to sweep things under the rug and uh, accept that you're not going to make a certain issue better in the warm-up. It's something to uh, make a mental note of and, and take back to your training at home. So when I'm walking around, I like, before I go into trot, to make sure that the horse is as relaxed as possible in the walk, making sure that we do have a nice four-beat rhythm in the walk, that the horse is happy to stretch their neck down. Sometimes it might be quite difficult to get the horse to relax in walk, I'll always make a, uh, give the horse a little bit of time to see if they do get better, but sometimes if you do have a, a particularly energetic horse, you may just need to, to move on into trot, give them a chance to move around a little bit, and then, then come back to the walk to see if they've, they've had a chance to settle down. But Lacoste is uh, quite happy in here at the moment, so uh, we'll take up the reins and, and move forward in our warm-up. And one thing to keep in mind when you are warming up is what, what purpose are you hoping to achieve at the competition? So the last, the last competition I rode on this horse, he got quite nervous in the ring and he uh, made quite a few mistakes. So if I was warming up for a competition today, my main goal would be to have a smooth, calm and, and quiet test. We wouldn't be aiming for the, uh, the biggest extended trots we've ever done or the, the, uh, the most exuberant test possible, we would be warming up with the plan that we want a nice, calm and quiet test with, with no unwanted movements thrown in. So when I am warming up, I'll uh, follow the same routine that I would do at home, which is starting in rising trot, letting the horse stretch forwards and downwards, and just making sure that he's in a nice, comfortable, even rhythm. I don't want to be working too much on uh, getting a bigger or better trot at the moment. I just want to make sure that he's happy in one rhythm, and most importantly, that he's going at my rhythm. It's, uh, I don't, don't want the horse to be trying to stop all the time, and at the same time, I don't want him trying to speed the, the, the rhythm up too much either. So he's uh, feeling quite nice in the contact today. One little habit that we do work on at home is sometimes, because he is such a big horse, he finds it difficult to balance and, and it feels like we're turning corners a little bit like a motorbike. So I'll be thinking about my inside leg just to help him bend around in the shape of the circle. And we'll always have those moments in the warm-up where the horse wants to look at things and there may be another horse that's being a little bit naughty that you have to warm up with. So if possible, you can try to find a nice quiet corner of the warm-up to do your own thing. But if that's not, not possible, you just accept that uh, everyone's in the same boat. We all have to warm up together and it's nice to be polite to the other riders if, if you can uh, move out of the way of someone who's struggling a little bit to uh, get their horse on the job. It, it does uh, make their life a little bit easier and it, and it helps to avoid any, any problems in the warm-up. I always know if uh, I'm on a particularly spooky horse or a, a horse that's a little bit horse shy and I notice that other riders have made an extra effort to give me a little bit more space, it's always nice to to thank them and, and, uh, and it's certainly uh, appreciated.
So he's quite, quite happy today in the, in the trot, so then we'll move forward to the canter. So when I went into sitting trot in preparation for our canter transition, he came a little bit against the contact too much, so back into rising trot, ask him to soften a little bit again, and then we'll try again. And that was a little bit better, but he still wanted to look around and and it may not be a huge change in his frame, but if you feel the horse lock up a little bit too much when you do go to sitting trot, you know that you're probably not going to get a canter transition that you're happy with if the trot beforehand isn't, isn't quite good enough. But we'll, we'll see how we go. So he uh, came up a little bit too much in the frame in the... Uh, in the transition, came a little bit against me, so this is the time when we are warming up. We uh, don't want to be too tough on the horse, but we do want to repeat that transition until we get one that we are happy enough, because sure enough, if we don't, if we don't do something about it in the warm-up, then in the test, the horse will think that they can do anything they like. So. So again, that was still not quite, quite good enough, so I'm going to ask him to soften a little bit in canter. I haven't forgotten about that transition, just going to give him a chance to soften a little bit more in the uh, working canter, and then we'll come back and repeat that transition. I'm not going to change the way I ask no, too much. I just keep letting him know what I want, and I wait until it improves. And so one of the things that this horse does like to do, he's a very tall horse, and he thinks he should be even taller, so he likes to put his head up as high as possible to get a better view of everything. So usually if we have a... Uh, a little issue with the frame or the submission, it's because he's trying to get his head and neck up a little bit too high. So then back to trot. And one other thing that I think is really important for your warm up is if you're warming up for a novice test. It's not an opportunity to show everyone else in the warm-up how great your tempi changes are. There's not much sense in riding movements too far advanced for the test if, if you are only warming up for that novice or elementary test. It uh, often just confuses your horse a little bit. They sort of aren't quite sure of what's going on. Obviously, there are some exercises that will improve the work of your horse. Say, if your horse tends to get a little bit on the forehand in canty and you could ride a little bit of haunches in in your warm-up and that will help improve the quality of the canter. But for this horse, we wouldn't go warming up doing as many changes as we can because it's just going to upset him when it does come to riding through the test. And if your horse is a little bit distracted at the competition, like I can feel that he's a little bit distracted now, he's not doing anything naughty, but he is just wanting to have a little look around and take in the, uh, the surroundings. I would just calmly continue through your warm up working on little transitions and little bits and pieces to uh, encourage the horse to focus a little bit more. If we start uh, overcorrecting them and being a bit too harsh in the warm up, then it will probably lead to a, a fairly tense test. We want to give our horse confidence in the warm up, particularly if they're, they're young or if they're a green competition horse. We want to let them know that. It's uh, just another ride, and uh, 
As I heard Nicole say earlier, you can't hope for anything better than what they give you at home. So if, uh, if they're working as close to how they go at home in the warm-up, then, then we have to be happy. So that's the first stage of, of my warm-up, is just the nice walk, trot, and canter around, making sure that the horse is calm and happy. And it's something that we would do every day at home. So it's, it's familiar to the horse. It's uh, part of their, their routine. After I can uh, tick those boxes that the horse is, is calm and happy, he's moving nicely in one rhythm. It's a rhythm that, that, that I'm happy with. We're not burning around at a million miles an hour. Then I would give, give them a little walk so they can have a little rest. The rider can have a little bit of a rest. Usually this is when I might have a little uh, run through of my test just in my head. I'll make sure that I know where I'm going. And then we take up the reins and, and move into the, uh, the harder work part of the warm up. And I always like to uh, split my warm up into a few little sections. The middle section is where I, I touch on the movements that are in the test and I try not to leave anything to the last minute. If we, uh, if we know that the horse struggles with something, we might have a look at that earlier on in the warm-up so we give them a, a chance to settle after, after doing it. But usually, we'd like to be competing. If we're competing at elementary, we, we would be training medium at home. So we're not competing at a level that is too challenging for the horse. If we start to uh, compete at the level that they're only really just starting to train at home, then it, uh, it might be overfacing them a little bit. And I'll move forward into working trot sitting. And so when he wants to have a little look around, I'll just ask him to pay a little bit more attention by riding onto the circle and then continuing large. So as I said earlier, this test that we're going to be riding has a little bit of travers. We don't have shoulder in, but I would always, it's part of my, my regular, regular ride, so I would still be using the shoulder in in the warm-up. But at the moment, he's just a little bit too much against the contact, and he's wanting to look around a bit too much, so I'm still keeping, keeping him in a slightly rounder frame. And uh, every time he wants to look around too much, I move on to a smaller circle. So rather than fighting with him too much and, and hanging on as tight as I can, I just use the circle to encourage him to think about what I'm doing a little bit more and not what's going on around the arena. And for a horse at this, this level and at this age, they're not usually the most experienced competition horses, so we can't really be surprised if they are distracted at a competition. But we do want to show them that they can try a little bit harder to pay attention. And I'm just working on asking him to soften a little bit more because he wants me to hold his, his big head up. And uh, most people don't realize until they stand next to any of my horses in the stable, but they are all quite tall. And this horse is uh, just about 18 hands. So when he asks me to do the work for him, it usually means there's quite a, quite a bit of work that he wants me to do. So that's why. Whenever he wants to get me to hold him up, I want to pretty quickly ask him to do an exercise or something to get him back on the job. Again, just another 10 meter circle. I just want one smooth, calm rhythm, and then a little bit of shoulder four or shoulder in. So, one of the things that I know he likes to do at home is uh, 
We get a bit of a zigzag happening when we go into shoulder in when he's not quite paying attention to my inside leg. So that's one thing that the judges will most certainly be looking out for when you do ride a test is uh, that you do keep a consistent, consistent line or a consistent angle in whatever movement you're doing. So when I'm warming up, if he's chopping and changing the, the angle that we're doing, even though we don't have a shoulder in in the test, I still want to uh, see if I can improve that as much as possible, but without losing focus on the other elements of the test. Because if we uh, spend all our time working on one movement of the test, then we will neglect every other aspect of the test and, and uh, it's not always so productive. So sometimes when you are warming up, you might have to accept that one movement isn't going to get much better and you do what you can, but then move on so that you can uh, get the best marks possible for every movement, not just aim for one, one eight and then have the rest of the test getting fives if we can, if we can uh, work on making sure the whole test is as good as possible, then that's what we want to do. So again, he's coming too much against me, so we make some transitions to ask him to pay attention again. And I'm sure everyone's familiar with that feeling that you get to a competition and it feels like all the buttons that were there perfectly the day before have all of a sudden disappeared. And uh, that's just the horse's nerves and, and tension creeping in. So you just you keep trying to do those familiar exercises to the horse to remind them that they do actually know what you're talking about and that they can try a little bit harder. One thing that I have noticed about this horse is that if we do have a warm-up that's a little bit too long, he does get tired and cranky, and it usually means that our test isn't going to be so smooth. So I always make sure that I'm not hopping on too early with him, whereas with my other horse, I know that a warm-up that's a little bit too short will uh, not work out so well. So that's where it really does come down to a bit of trial and error. Your first competition on a horse, you won't, won't really know what you're going to get until you get there, but you might make a little mental note that you needed a bit more warm up or, or maybe try a little bit less until you figure out what works best for your horse. Another thing that I've <coughs> realized through our training at home is this horse always is a little bit more cooperative when it comes to the haunches in than the shoulder in, so it's never usually too much of a problem. Today he's a little bit distracted, which is why he is losing the consistency of of the frame, but it's a uh, fairly atmospheric arena for a young horse to be in, so we'll f forgive him today. And then I'll give him a, just a little break by going rising trot. And we do have a few two medium trots in the test, so that's also something that will touch on as we're warming up. But 
but I usually leave the medium trot till a little bit later in the test. And it's not something that I practice too many of either. We usually practice the start of a medium, ride a few strides and then bring the horse back and then practice the start again because if you get a good start for your medium then the rest of the medium trot is usually pretty good. Whereas if you can't quite get the beginning right then, then the rest of the medium won't won't work. So again, I'll go rising trot, ask him to lengthen the stride a little bit. And making sure he's paying attention at the end. And again, back to walk. Give him a short break. Another thing that I also heard Nicole say while I was outside was giving your horse those, those breaks in their work to to get the air back into their muscles, give them a little bit of a chance to catch their breath, also a chance for the rider to catch their breath, and uh, make sure that they're not going into the test tired or, or too worn out. And uh, usually when you're at a competition, you have, a, have someone standing by the, the side of the warm-up, keeping an eye on the time, I always like to uh, get a little reminder of, of the time about 10 minutes before I'm due to go into the ring. So that gives me a chance to uh, mentally prepare myself, think about what we have to do. And it also means if there's something that you wanted to uh, come back to and have another little practice of before you go into the test, you do have that opportunity because we don't want to be going into the, the ring flustered or, or thinking that we don't have enough time. So it's the same for this horse in the canter. He just wants to look for a little bit too much support from my hand, but... Jaden, I'm being your friend on the side of the arena oh. saying you have six minutes till your ride time. Thank you, Cheryl. So, if anyone's warming up and... Cheryl's standing by the, uh, by the gear check gate. You know that she's got a, a working watch and can let you know when you're running out of time. So, keeping in mind that we do have five minutes left, we think this would be the time where you, uh, if you don't already have your jacket on, put your jacket on, take your warm-up boots off if you do have boots on your horse, just to make sure you're not leaving that to the very last minute, I always make sure I've got my jacket on and my exercise boots off. And then I go back and finish off whatever it is that we need to touch on. So we haven't done a lot of canter work. So I'll just make sure that we've touched on each of the things that we do have in our test. So some simple changes. A little bit of counter canter. And you also want to keep in mind how the exercises that you have been riding at home will affect what you do in the test. So one of the things that we have been doing at home is starting the flying changes. And I know that the way the canter work is set up in this test, when we canter across the diagonal, he's probably going to be thinking about those flying changes and, and uh, trying to fall back on, on the little cheats or the little habits that, he's, that he tries to get out of the hard work. So for this horse, he likes to keep it a surprise and he'll uh, either slow down or he'll speed up quite a lot. So we wanna make sure that we've done a few diagonals, checking that he stays in a nice, comfortable rhythm. And also one thing that this test does have, it doesn't so much trip horses up at this level because they've usually just come from novice, but there is a canter truck transition 
and you want to make sure that you have done a few of those, particularly at the end of your warm-up, because if you spend all of your warm-up working only on symbol changes, you may find you get into the test and your horse does a beautiful transition to walk when you've in fact asked for, for trot. And those transitions usually have 10 marks allocated just for those transitions, so that's a lot of marks to lose if you have just forgotten to practice that transition. As Jaden does his final three minutes of warm-up, let me introduce Mary Seafried, who will be judging Jaden's 3.2 test. Mary is our very own international five-star dressage judge and will judge this test with live commentary so we can be part of it. Mary started off as a dressage competitor at both state and national levels. When her family and professional life became so busy she could not find the time needed for training, she decided to put her commitment into becoming a dressage judge and volunteer committee worker at state and national level. Mary became a national dressage judge during the 70s and attended her first FEI course in 1975 in Denmark. Mary was made an accredited four-star FEI judge in 1983 and an FEI five-star judge in 1998. Devoting so much of her life to the dressage community, Mary is the current chair of the National Dressage Committee and remains the first and only Australian ever to judge the Grand Prix at the Olympic Games after her role as one of the seven core judges at the Sydney Olympics. Mary is one of just two five-star FEI judges in Australia and has been paving the way for future Australian international judging representatives. Mary hopes to inspire others to see judging as both a rewarding and challenging experience. Thank you, Mary, and good luck, Jaden. <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. Um, that sounded um, not like me, I don't think, <laughs> really. Um, and it sounded like a lifetime ago, 1975. I was very young when I did that. Um, First of all, I'd like to say just congratulations to Jaden. It really was an excellent exercise that he's described to you in warming up his horse. The sequence was great. His emphasis on having a calm, <coughs> listening and happy horse, not using up too much energy in the warm up, but testing all of the buttons which are needed to do the test itself. And I particularly like that he used a lot of transitions, he had a rest period in the middle. And really, if you've been listening and know something about the training scale that we all use, both riders and judges, as our Bible, um, he really went through that. First of all, it was about the rhythm and then the contact, and then he wanted suppleness and he wanted more throughness and checking the impulsion. So that's what is required for the elementary horse and I think it was a great example of, of how, to, how to warm up the horse to prepare it for a test in 30 minutes which he used and I liked his emphasis on I want you to carry yourself the self carriage aspect of it and that, that's what he expects. Okay Jaden we're about to start I feel like I'm multi-testing here but just for the audience, this is the first, elementary is the first test up from um, novice level. And as judges, we do expect the horse to carry more weight on the quarters. So I want you to be looking for where does the inside hind leg come in relation to the rider's position? Is it taking weight? Is he starting to step under? Is he in an uphill way um, or tendency? And we especially, especially in the medium trots, which he's going to do. And is he consistently taking the contact and through? We do expect 
more bending because we've got 10 metre circles here which do require quite a lot of weight to be taken on the inside hind to create and accept this bend through the body and we want balance and self-carriage. So it's a big ask, Jaden. And um, I'm, this is a six-year-old horse, by the way, and he's in a very nice stage in his training and his competition career. So Jaden enters in collected trot and then he's got halt salute and proceed in collected trot. This is all one mark. So the you judges on the short side, you can see whether he's straight and you can see through the front leg action whether he's active and carrying himself. He's a little bit beyond the marker. But listening to the rider and waiting for the rider through the halt. So what could be an eight to start off with can't be because it's not precisely at the marker. So we give him a seven. He's tracking right and now he's medium trot, a little unbalanced to start, but good quality strides. He could close a little bit more from behind. And by that I mean that the hocks could be a little more under. But nevertheless, it's a seven five and a seven for the transitions. Now he's into Travair Traver left. And just what right Jaden was saying, he could be a little bit more through and accepting that bend with a bit more submission. So six five for that. Now circles, which have to show us both bends equally. And he kept the horse very active. So a seven five for that. And here he's more accepting, which is interesting. So probably an eight for the Traver. Transition into medium walk, and we do expect the walk to be clear in rhythm. And he's preparing for a turn on the haunches where we really want active inside hind leg to take the weight. So a seven five for the turn. It could be a little bit more through and fluid. Now we have another one. This one became a little large, if you can see, so it's still and could be more responsive, a seven. Now we have free walk on a long rein. We especially want to see the horse draw to the rein, stretch forward and down, and he's carrying out this exercise excellently, and he has a very big overstep. Could be a little bit more submissive at F, at E, sorry, when he picks up the reins. But the quality of the walk is an eight. And again, the medium walk is well shown. Could be a little bit more through the neck and a bit more free. But Jaden's trying to keep everything under control here. Um, seven, five. And as you see, there was a mistake because that right lead, he didn't listen and it was late. So we have to give that a four. But, Jaden, I think we need a circle at A. <laughs> and Jaden happens to all riders. He was upset with himself about the, um, the transition to the canter. So then he went on and was thinking, how do I get the horse back? So he's now got an error of course as well, which is a minus two from each of the judges. But now we want a circle and I'm really looking to see how does this horse sit and take the weight and keep upright. I would like to see the outside shoulder a little bit more controlled. But nevertheless, he answers the question pretty well, a seven five. Now he has his simple change. Clear transition, clear walk, which is fantastic. I think that's sort of an eight and not a nine because you saw him just want to take the contact a little bit through the turn at B. Now we have another circle and in this way, the horse is a little better balanced and Jaden's keeping him a little bit down because of all of you people watching, that's okay. 
Again, good quality, 775. Opening up into the medium canter, which is enough. It is enough. Could be a little better connected with the seat, a 75. And a 7 for the transitions because at K could be a little bit more closed from behind. Now the counter canter, keeping the flexion left, which you can clearly see. It was balanced, 7-5. Whoops, I've lost the other side of my test here. The horse was objecting a little bit to the transition into the simple change. So it's a 7. And another medium canter. It's enough. We just want to see the horse open up behind and open up with the inside hind leg and stay uphill. So 7-5 again and maybe an eight for the transitions this time. He's beginning to work now and on the job. Could be a little more uphill here, especially through the counter canter, seven five. Now we have a transition to the trot at C, which we have to keep in our heads. Jaden's a little bit careful here because the horse is wanting to look at the other horses but it's a seven and a seven. And now the final center line, very active trot, good preparation, and why? <laughs> he was right, Jaden wasn't happy. Okay, we end up being a seven five. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jaden. And you can see this is a horse where Jaden's looking after the basics very well and building it all in to progress to medium and up the levels. Don't ask too much. He doesn't do map riding. He's thinking about the way the horse is going and that's what we need to judge. The way of going, the activity, the balance, the self-carriage is what gives quality to the movement. Thank you.